I'm going to have you turn to um, Psalm 126. And I'll, I'll get there in a minute about the verse. But I, I want to, well, you guys know it's uh, Thanksgiving, right? Coming up? Thanksgiving's coming. You know, you know and I, I felt... I felt like I want to give you guys a little history lesson about it, just to remind ourselves about why Thanksgiving, why we have it. Well, I think we all pretty much know, but just remind us of it. Well, the pilgrims came, 1620, and... uh, they left for Plymouth, right? And you know, really, they left England, really, to, for freedom of religion. Freedom to worship. That's why they came. And, and when they came, there was 102 passengers on there, on that boat. And they were on their way to Plymouth. I saw Plymouth Rock. I was disappointed. I was expecting this really big rock, and the next thing, is that what it is? I had to look in the hole. Is that what it is? I was pretty disappointed. I thought, you know, in my mind, I thought it was this big, huge rock. But anyway, get back to this. You know, that 102 people went, but it took him 60 day, 66 days to get here. And then when they got here, uh, they stayed in their boat. That's what happened for quite a while. And half of the people died on there. They rode the winter out on their boat. So they were down like the 50 people. That's kind of what happened. There was sickness, disease, and then they got on shore and they met an Indian by the name Squanto. You guys remember her name? Well, him. Okay, thank you. But, you know, he taught them how to survive in that new area. Showed them what to eat, what they couldn't eat, what they could do. Tried to help them out. That's what he did. And, uh, and then after that, a year later, after they planted their first seeds, they had a, they had a feast. That's what happened. Now, you know what they, what was on their table? We think it's turkey, but they had lobster. (laughs) They ate seals. And there was even swans on the menu. And that's something. But you got to remember where they were. You guys, anybody been in the main coast before? There's a lot of lobster there, isn't there? So it's kind of natural for them to be eating that. You know, I mean, in our mind, we think it's turkey day, right? But, you know, they had this feast, and really it had to do with the first corn harvest that they got. And they were excited. (laughs) So they invited 
their Native American friends with them, and they had a, they had a party. It was like a three-day party. And they celebrated. So, you know, you know, our traditional way of having Thanksgiving, you know, we kind of made it evolve into something else. But the whole thing is, is that they were thankful for God's provision. And that they were Christians, and they were Bible-believing people. And, and, you know, it really kind of ties into, like, some of the Old Testament thinking of, you know, the, the feast days. And they were celebrating the harvest. Because they had hard times. You know? They were struggling. But then when they got their first harvest, they were excited, you know? Boy, turkey's different now, huh? Turkey day is different, isn't it? They even made it a fast day. Did you guys know that? That was a fast day every year when they first started with that. We don't fast now. We get, <laughs> we get full and we take a nap, don't we? But you know, they were excited and they... They were excited that God provided for them. And, and we should be thankful. You know, like they had their winter. <laughs> right? Like I was talking about earlier about having a winter. But God always gives us hope in the winter, right? Squanto was that hope. Helped them out. But, you know, now I want to say something about this because I, I want to talk about a harvest and, and to be, and, and what a harvest is going to bring for us, you know? Because the Bible has a lot to say about a harvest. And really, that's what Thanksgiving is all about. We're really celebrating our harvest. But now we go to the grocery store, we get spoiled, right? Don't we? Don't even have to pluck the feathers off the turkey, you know what I mean? We get pretty spoiled, but you know, it's a harvest. And people were celebrating, you know, like the first fruit. That's what they were doing. But now I want to look at this. 126 verse 6, it says this. He, he who goes to and fro weeping, carrying his bag of seed, shall indeed come again with a shout of joy, bringing his sheaves with him. And the verse right before that, it says, you know, there's times that we sow in tears, but joy comes in the morning. You know, so we reap what we sow. There's a, whole, there's a whole thing about that in the Bible, about sowing. We can sow good seed or we can sow bad seed. And every seed is going to bring whatever fruit it brings, right? Don't it? But, you know, God wants us to have joy. He wants us to have joy. At harvest time. You know, the book of Isaiah talks about that too. And, and I'm just going to read this quickly. Isaiah chapter 9. It, it tells us in verse 3, it says, Thou shalt multiply a nation, thou shalt increase their gladness, and they will be glad in thy presence. And with the gladness of harvest, as men rejoice when they divide the spoil. And the, right before that, it was talking about how God is going to show up in the darkness. His light is going to show, show up in the darkness. But you know, but when the harvest comes, it brings joy. 
don't it? And, and, um, and, and uh, it brings us so much joy, just like a sold, like I just read, just like a soldier dividing a spoil after a war, you know? It gives us joy. And God wants our barns to be filled with fruit. He wants us to be fruitful. The Word of God tells us that, right? He wants us to be fruitful. Now, I want us to look at a verse now. It's in 2 Corinthians chapter 9. You know, we're blessed if we produce fruit in our life. So he wants us to be fruitful. There's no doubt about it. And I want to look at verse 6. And it says, I say, now I say, this I say, he who sows sparingly will reap sparingly. And he who sows bountifully shall also reap bountifully. So, you know, it all depends. You know, so in other words, what's it say? We got to sow a lot, right? Isn't that what we're supposed to do? Sow a lot. Don't hold back. Sow a lot. And, and in my garden, you know, uh, God talks to me a lot in my garden. He really does. And, and uh, I remember one year I was kind of like, being cheap with my seeds in my cucumber patch. And I, and I didn't get a whole lot of cucumbers. And I learned something. I says, you know what? Be generous with those seeds, and you're going to get a lot of cucumbers. And they all cross-pollinate each other and all of that. And the thing is, you know, I want to have cucumbers. I just don't want to have plants in my garden. You know what I mean? I want to have fruit. And, and that, that's such a principle right there. And I think God wants us to sow a lot. He wants the, us to sow so when the harvest comes, we can be joyful. You know what I mean? Does that make sense? And then, you know, with that, you know, I, I want to, so if we hold back, that's what it says, right? We're not going to get much. But if we're really generous, right, we're going to get a lot. Wow. And I, I know that to be true, that principle. That sowing and reaping it, it's, like a, a, it's like the law of gravity, you know? If I had a pencil and I dropped it, it would fall, right? It's the same thing with sowing and reaping. It's a, it's a principle that God made that is really going to happen, okay? So if we want much, we got to sow much. If we hold back, we're not going to get much. And that's quite a thing. That's quite a principle right there. Now I, I want to read something out of Proverbs, okay? Because you know a harvest is good, and and it's really good for us to. It, it's good for us to have joy when I, I don't know. I, I I'm pretty happy when my garden does well. You know. Boy, it makes me happy when I got a lot of tomatoes out there, I got a lot of cucumbers. I don't know. You, you, I, I just got to say this. You don't even have to work for it, but you can end up with tons of zucchini. Seems like that stuff will grow out of rocks. I don't know. <laughs> Harvest season, a lot of people put z zucchinis in people's cars and stuff like that. You know what I mean? You got to know what I'm talking about? But isn't it a good feeling, though? Isn't it a good feeling to be able to see fruit from your labor? Nothing like a juicy tomato. 
if you like tomatoes. Or fresh cucumber. Or all these things that the garden brings. And I get excited. And it should give us joy, you know, when we do that. But once, you know, once the harvest comes and, you know, we, we thank the Lord and we're all grateful for the wonderful blessings of that, well, we got to plant again. And, and uh, I want to read in Proverbs chapter 20, verse 4, it tells us, A sluggard does not plow after autumn, but he begs during the harvest and has nothing. So, you know, if we don't plow again, we're not going to get anything. You know? And I don't know, but, you know, it says after autumn, and in Israel or up in that region, that's their harvest time just like us, you know? So after we get the benefits of our harvest, we've got to plow again. We've got to plow again. We've got to do all that hard work again, you know? Like my, my garden is full of weeds right now. It doesn't look very nice out there. <laughs> it really don't. And, and I'm overwhelmed even thinking about the work that's going to be involved in getting that ground ready again for the seeds, you know? But I don't want to be that sluggard, so I'll do it, <laughs> you know? Because I found that there when, when there were times I was a sluggard, I didn't have a whole lot to brag about or be thankful for at harvest time, right? And, and you know, and God wants us to be sowing seeds for his kingdom. All of us. And, and um, he doesn't want us to do that. And, and when I was thinking about the... What I want to share today, you know, I want to share something out of my favorite place when it talks about sowing and reaping in the Bible. And it's in Ecclesiastes chapter 11. Now, now, this is really awesome. And this is my favorite place about that. And it's like, well, pastor, why are you talking about this today? Well, we got seeds right there. A hundred one of them. That's pretty amazing to me. Isn't it? You know, but, but I, I want to break this down a little bit. The first six verses, that's what I want to look at. And it tells us, you know, Solomon, you know, that guy, boy, wisest man, right, that ever lived. The wisdom came from the Lord. I wish he had enough wisdom to know that only one wife was enough for him. Maybe he wasn't as wise as we thought. No, I'm just kidding. But verse 1 and 2, it tells us. I'm going to read those two verses first. And it says, Cast your bread upon the surface of the waters, for you will find it after many days. Divide your portion to seven or even eight, for you do not know what misfortune may occur on the earth. You know? So we, we got to be, we got to use wisdom when we sow. Right? And it tells us, you know, and, and in this case, it has nothing to do with sowing. It really has to do with 
in this case, it has to do with a merchant that does shipping, okay? That's what he's talking about. Now, do you guys know that Solomon, he had a, a, a fleet? You guys know about that? And, and he says, you know, you got to put your bread. And, and so he did trade. And he did trade with the Orient. That's what he did. And he had access by the Red Sea to get to the Orient with his boats. Okay? And, and, uh, and I want to look at 1 Kings for a minute. Okay? And I'm going to show you a couple things here. 1 Kings chapter 10, verse 14. Now the weight of the gold which came in to Solomon in one year was 666 talents of gold. Besides that, from the traders and the wares of the merchants and all the kings of the Arabs, and the governors of the country. And then, so we see that. Now I want to skip right down to verse 22, same chapter. 1 Kings 10.22. For the king had sea, at sea the ships of Tarshish, the ships of Haram. Once every three years the ships of Tarshish came Bringing gold, silver, ivory, apes, and peacocks. You see that? Every three years. But he didn't send just one boat. He sent a lot of boats out there. And, and, and gone. So he got a return. From what I see, he got a return from putting grain on those boats. And putting it out there, right? And, and that return came gold, peacocks, apes. You got different types of things. But he got a return. But it took a while. We just read three years, right? So... You know, sometimes when we sow seed, it might take a month, it might take a season, it might take three years, it, it might even happen after we're gone that the fruit will happen. You know, I, I know of a missionary that was... Uh, well, he was our, our superintendent at one time, and he had a church, and it was out in uh, China somewhere, okay? And, and he pastored there for many, 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 many years, okay? He only ended up with one convert the whole time he was there. His church was empty the whole time he was there. He was very faithful to the Lord, okay? It's when he left, God bear, bore fruit of the labor that he sowed in that place. And that church became, there was like 500 people going to that church after that. But, but you know, in that case right there, he, he, um, I'm sure he was discouraged. <laughs> You know, I'm sure he had those days that he was wondering, you know, why am I out here doing what I'm doing because I'm not seeing any fruit for what I'm doing, right? But, but God. See, it's God's work. It's not ours. You know, he just wants us to sow seed. That's what he wants us to do, you know. And, and, and a lot of times when I plant my garden, and I remember, you know, I could work really hard in the garden, you know, picking out the rocks, digging the soil, making it nice and healthy, right? Uh, the soil healthy, put the seeds in, be generous with my seeds. I could do all of that. And, and I make this, and I, I, I make this uh, 
a habit when I'm done. I usually say, Lord, I say a prayer in a garden. I did my part. Now you have to do yours. You know, I, I did my labor, but if you don't show up, okay, I'm going to pick weeds. I need you to do the work. Right? See, God is the one that brings the increase. You know, it might take three years. It might take a lifetime. But you know, God, when we sow seed, you know, that's a spiritual principle right there. We sow seed for the Lord, there will bear fruit. It's going to bear fruit. We can count on it. That's why the Bible tells us to not grow weary in well-doing. In due season, we're going to reap a harvest. Praise the Lord. I'm thankful for that. How about you? And God wants us to throw seeds around. He really does. That's our job. You know? But, but I want to look at, see, and he said, send it out in all those ways because you don't know how the blessing's going to come back to you. Maybe one of those boats out there will have a shipwreck and never make it home. And if I put all my eggs in that one basket, I wouldn't bear any fruit, right? And, and I don't think God wants us to put all our eggs in one basket. He wants us to spread out those seeds, you know? Right? And I think that's important. So now... In verse 3, it talks about the farmer now. It says, And if the clouds are full, they pour out rain upon the earth, and whether a tree falls towards the south or toward the north, wherever the tree falls, there it lies. And, and you know, and, and uh, again, the sky's always changing, ain't it? And the clouds are always changing, aren't they? And, and I even saw days like you saw a dark cloud coming by and we got no rain. <laughs> you know? Right? But every cloud, it's always changing. It's on the move, right? And, and uh, because of that, you know, we, we need to know that, you know, and God's always changing like that. His, his work is on the move like that. And, and that tree, you know, falling in the, you know, down, it, it's stationary, it's permanent, isn't it? It doesn't change like the clouds do, does it? It's in one place, isn't it? But if a wind would come, it would fall, and then there it is, it's just there, right? It's there to rot, right? And also, we can almost look at that tree and say, oh, boy, it's getting stormy out there. I don't want to be out where the trees are. So therefore, you know, therefore, I'm not going to sow any seed. I might get hit by a tree today. Yeah. But, you know, we got to, we, we got, we got, God is always on the move. And he wants to bring life, don't he? And those clouds, you know, I want to keep going. Verse 5, just as you know the path of the wind and how the bones, oh, I want to look at verse 4 first. For he who watches the wind will not sow, and he who looks at the clouds will not reap. There you go. And I remember one summer, it was almost a summer like we had this year, 
Well, we had a lot of rain this year. Maybe not that bad. And, and I was painting the house. We were up in Newport. I was painting the house at the time. And if I would have let myself, if I would have talked myself into it, I would have never went out there with a paintbrush. Because it was always cloudy. <laughs> but I went out anyway. <laughs> And you know what? It didn't rain much. It, you know, sometimes we want to look for the perfect day to sow seed, don't we? We're not going to have a perfect day. And, and sometimes we can talk ourselves out of something with excuses, can't we? You know, and, and that's why we can't look at the wind you know, it's a windy day today. I'm going to stay in the house. Or, oh, I'd like, to, I'd like to sow right now, but something else is happening. I can't. You know? Or there's always something, right, that could get in the way of sowing seed. But God wants us to sow seed, you know? Let's not let our circumstances tell us whether we should sow seed or not. You know what I mean? Can't wait for that perfect day. There's no perfect day. <laughs> you know, like I said, we can always find an excuse. Adverse circumstances can cause us to do nothing. Isn't that true? And let's think about all the missed opportunities we can have with that kind of thinking. You know what I mean? Anybody know Billy Sunday? I'm going to read a quote from him. The skin of reason is stuffed with a lie. And we could reason ourselves away from sowing seed, can't we? Hallelujah. But I find when I take that step of faith, God always amazes me. You know, you know what I mean? It, like, like this. That, came, that rolled right out of my mouth. A couple of weeks ago when I was preaching about, you know, uh, being a cheerful giver and we all, you know, do it with a cheerful heart and a willing heart. Remember that sermon? And you know what? A lot of us acted on that. That's the fruit of it right there. I'd say a majority of us acted on that, on what we could do to help, okay? Didn't matter, but we, we, look what happened. And, and I remember a couple weeks ago, it rolled off my mouth, and then I was like, ah. Uh. <laughs> and I said, I'm believing God for 100. And I was, in my mind at the time, I was thinking about all the circumstances that could rob me of a hundred. But I took a step of faith. And we all did. And look what happened. <laughs> this is actually evidence of what I'm talking about right now. We, we could have talked ourselves out of a lot of things. Well, Christmas is coming. The oil prices are high. You know, I, I can think of a lot of reasons, okay, why I shouldn't be sowing into this thing right now. Don't know what the winter's gonna bring. The food prices are high. 
right? But God. And it's because we obeyed the Lord. We obeyed the Lord and we took a step of faith and look what he did. You know, that, that's amazing to me right there. That's a miracle. You know, we're looking for miracles. Sometimes we look for these big grandeur things. Well, that's a miracle. And honestly, what better way to celebrate Thanksgiving eh, than to say thank you, Lord, for the harvest? You know, thank you, Lord. You know, but you know, we sowed once, we reaped a harvest, but now we got to sow it again. Okay. Because it didn't get where it's going, you know. It, it could stay right here, but you know what? we got to do some plowing now to get those seeds out there so God could do his work. You know what I mean? And, and uh, you know, I chose to do that because I, I want us to see the importance of sowing and reaping. Because this is not going to be the last time we need to do that. Do you know what I'm saying? And I find the more we sow, if we hold back, we're not going to get much. But if we sow sparingly, I mean uh, generously, bountifully, we're going to reap a harvest. Okay? And, and we got to sow in many ways. And now look at this, because verse 5 really tells us why. This, this is the, the heart of the whole matter right here, okay? Verse 5. Just as you don't know the path of the wind, or how bones are formed in the womb of a pregnant woman, so you do not know the activity of God. Who makes all things? Couple last week it was really windy that day, and I wouldn't have really as windy as it was. I didn't see. I didn't. I couldn't see the wind, but I could see the effects of the wind. And there was two types of wind going on at the same time, okay? There was like, the wind was moving two different ways that day. I saw the trees moving back and forth, okay? But in the parking lot, I saw little circles of dirt showing up. And, and, and you know, now, we can't see wind, but I saw results of that wind and that result showed up two different ways that day. Because of the results, I knew how the wind was moving, right? And it's the same thing with God. You know, we don't know how God is going to work with all those shoeboxes. Every one of those boxes is a story. It's a soul. You know, and, and then when I look at a seed, you know, like a cucumber seed, you know, <laughs> and I'm thinking, sometimes I think, I, my brain, I, I, I don't know, I've got a crazy brain. But God created it. I look at the seed and I look at that and I say, wow, there's a plant in there. <laughs> And there's all kinds of cucumbers in there. How cool is that? Yeah, it, it's, it's just a little seed, you know? But all of that is in there. <laughs> you know? And, and, uh, and I don't know how God makes that happen, but it happens, okay? 
You know, a mustard seed turns into a big tree, don't it? And even like this example of a bone, how does a bone grow in a mother's womb? A bone's pretty hard. And all our bones formed in our mother's womb. Who else but God can do that? See, when we sow seeds, it's really God that does the work. And, and uh, ye uh, yesterday, there was a lady that was here, and she was talking. She was uh, like the director of OCC. She'd come out of New York. She was just seeing, you know, our church, seeing how we're doing, you know. And she came, and she told me a story. She told me a story about one of those shoe boxes. See, because uh, they, they go down the, uh, like South Carolina, and they go through every box, but they don't want to ruin the integrity of the box, okay? They keep the integrity together. They're going to go through all these boxes, but they keep the integrity of the box. And what they're checking for is the stuff that shouldn't have been packed, okay? That's what they're checking for. But they keep that. Well, they, they saw one box, and they were, uh, they were oversized pink flip-flops with polka dots on them in a box for a boy, a male boy. And, and she was saying that uh, they were tempted to say, hey, we, we can't put this down. It doesn't go, you know? So, so they, but they said, we got to keep the integrity of the box. So they didn't touch it. And what they did is they put a special tracking on that one box for that kid, okay? And they wanted to follow up with that box to see the whole story, okay? Well, what happened is that boy, when he opened his gift, okay, he was in tears with joy, okay? Because he's been praying that his mother could have a set of shoes. Those flip-flops were for mom. Now, how does a bone form in a womb? You know, every one of those boxes is a story. And God's going to use that somehow, some way in somebody's life. And those are a hundred seeds right there. Now, that doesn't mean we're not going to stop sowing. After this project's gone, we've got to plow again, right? Yeah. We've got to plow again because that's what God wants us to do to bear fruit, right? But, you know, every box is a story. And God knows exactly who's going to get that. I don't know how he does that. <laughs> You know, those pink flip-flops. Go figure, right? And I showed a few stories about yo-yos and how that changed somebody's life. But these are... See, we can't see God working, but he does. He just wants us to sow seed. And he wants us to plow, you know... He wants us to plow so that the seed will grow and take root, right? So I sowed seed, and I got fruit from that because we all obeyed the Lord. But now we've got to plow again. As we're planting those seeds, we've got to plow again. And what I want to do 
at the end of this service is we're going to pray over those boxes. And that's going to be our plowing. We're going to pray over those boxes. And then it tells us over here, verse 6, sow your seed in the morning. Don't be idle in the evening. For you don't know whether morning or evening sowing will succeed or whether both of them will, right? We don't know. We just got to take advantage of all the opportunities that we have to sow seed. You know, and, and, and I'm going to end with this because I, I want to, it, it, it's not just the shoe boxes. We're all witnesses for Christ, aren't we? The harvest field is ripe, right? Now, how can God bear fruit if we don't throw seeds? You know, I was talking, well, we were talking. You're at work for a reason. You know, every one of us is where we are for a reason. And God wants us to throw seeds. Let's not worry about, okay, how that seed is going to grow. Okay? That's God's job. We just got to throw the seeds. That's our job. Right? And we got to prepare the ground, don't we? You know, God wants us to be witnesses, and he wants us to be fruitful. And he even told us, Jesus told us this, pray to the Lord of the harvest. The harvest field is ripe. The workers are few. Pray to the Lord of the harvest that he would send forth laborers. You know who those laborers are? Us. If we reap sparingly, I mean so sparingly, but if we so generously, we're going to reap a harvest. Not all seeds fall on bad ground. Right? So we got to ask ourselves a question. How are we doing in that area? Can we sow more? Should we sow more? Much is given. Much is required. You know? And not only that, but he's not going to make us do it, right? You know, we, uh, just like what I was saying a little while ago about my cucumber seeds, I was like, I don't know why I was so cheap with them. Now when I put them in, I put them in all over the place. I'll thin them out if I get too many. You know what I mean? And, and we should have that mindset when we do the work of God. Right? Now I'm looking at 101 seeds. We got fruit once. Now we have to pray and plow the ground so that these seeds, okay, will do what God sent it to do. You know what I mean? And I, I, I figured that's what a better way to have an altar call than to pray over these things. This is 101 kids. And every box, we heard it a couple weeks ago, every box is like a snowflake, right? They're not the same. And God knows where they're going. But if God doesn't do anything with this, it's just going to be a box, right? You know, it, it, it's almost like after I'm done with my garden and, hey, God, I did my part, but now you need to do your magic, <laughs> right? And that's what I, 
My heart's desire is that we pray for these boxes today. Who wants to do that with me? Let's have an altar call. Let's get around this table right now. And we're going to pray over these, these seeds that we're blessed to throw around. And God knows it might go to Philippines. All right? Because isn't that what you told me? At the Philippines, they, you get those, right? It, it might go to Africa. Who knows? It might even go to Greenland. Boy, I wouldn't want to go there, but one of these boxes might go there, right? And these are souls. And these souls, some of them don't know Jesus or their families, right? And it could be a simple thing as a pencil, you know, <laughs> or, or whatever it is. I put a picture, I, I packed a box, I put my picture in there with me with no hair. This is what I look like. <laughs> and guess what? I live in a church. And I'm thinking, this person is going to think I'm really crazy. But you know what? what? I am. <laughs> and, and, and I'm not ashamed of that. And we, we're going to exercise some faith right now. And we're going to trust God with this. Because you know what? There was a lot of sacrifice here. I got no doubt about it. And we obeyed the Lord. We obeyed the Lord by bringing in what was needed. We got fruit. Now we're going to sow. We're going to plow. Our prayer is the plowing. So these seeds fall on good ground, okay? All right? Let's pray. Someone want to lead us in prayer? Let's all pray. Grab a box, come around the table. Let's get real tight here. Let's do it. We're going to trust the Lord. And, and, and you know what? And we're going to pray however the Spirit leads you to pray right now, okay? So we can all be in agreement. So we're going to all pray it one at a time. Somebody's going to lead us in prayer, and then someone else is going to pray. We're going to pray, okay? We're going to trust the Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Oh, yara ta ta yara yara ta. Thank you, Lord. Jesus. Yes, oh God. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, yara ta 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 yara yara ta. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, yara ta 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 yara yara ta 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 yara yara ta 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 yara yara ta. Thank you, God. I praise your holy name, oh God. Thank you, Jesus. child, oh God, that is represented here, oh God, and we yes, just pray Lord. and believe that you make the way that this, each yes. box gets to the right child, oh God, yes. Yes, to Lord. bless them and bless yes. others and yes. show yes, your Lord love, Jesus. and we thank you, Lord, for doing that in your Amen. holy name. Yes, Jesus. Lord, yes, God, hallelujah. Let every seed here bear fruit, Lord. Yes. Every seed, don't let it die in the ground. I pray that it bears fruit, Father. We did our part. We're expecting you to do yours, Father. Do what you do. Provide those miracles, oh God, that only you can bring. 
in these people's lives, oh God. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Yes. God, I lift up the families of the children that are getting these boxes. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Pray a hedge protection over these boxes. Yes. I pray that in all of the traveling that they're going to do all over the world, I pray that you keep them intact. Yes. I pray you keep everything that's in them intact. And I pray that you, I pray a hedge of protection over all of the planes and all of the uh, cars and buses. Yes, Lord. All of the transportation and all the people that are transporting. I pray a hedge of protection over Samaritan's purse. I pray that yes, you just keep all of them safe yes. while they're traveling yes. and help them to get to their locations as quickly yes, and safely as possible. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Heavenly Father, I, two weeks ago when we set a goal of doubling what we did the year before, and I thought that was a lofty goal, but once again, Lord, you you have showed your, your, yes, Lord. And your grace and your love on us. Yes, and you, you more Lord. than doubled it. Thank you, Lord. And, 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 and there's going to be smiles on these kids' faces yes. that they have oh, never, ever, ever done. Yes, Lord. What's their heart, Lord Jesus? And where it came from. Impact their lives, oh God. Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Jesus. Thank you, Father. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Praise your name. Father God, we just pray for these boxes. Yes. We pray for these children. Lord God, we're so happy that we've got all of these to do. Yes. We just pray that we'll see yes, many Lord. people. Jesus. We don't get too far, but we're going to reach out to each and every one that we possibly can. Yes, Lord. Because we all know that God loves the whole world. Yes. That he gave his only begotten son. Yes. That whosoever believeth in him. Yes, Lord. Should not perish. Yes, oh God. Yes, Yes, Father. Everybody saved. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Did we do this together? Thank you, Father. Together we're big. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Father. And let every seed fall on good ground. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes, yeah, so, oh um, thank you, Lord. Yes, Father. Yes, Lord. Thank you, God. And thank you for providing the seed for the sower, God. Thank you for providing that. Thank you, Lord. Yes, God, I pray for all the 
it's on Wednesday night that come that get hired to pop up. Because even though yes. I don't think they can really wrap their brains around what they do mm-hmm. in the community. Mm-hmm. But Lord, I pray that you would somehow, Lord. Yes. I won't say that in doubt. I say it because I don't understand exactly how you do it. But Lord, I pray that you would bring through the gift that they could see. That, mm-hmm. that yes. somehow they would have a very real experience of knowing. Yes, Lord. They did something good for you, God, and that you would do something good in them through that, Lord, in their lives, something very real and tangible. That yes, they Lord. Understand, Lord. That you use yes, to Lord. It, Lord. And I draw them closer to you and cementing strong faith, Lord. Mm. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Boy. I'm just feeling in my heart that these boxes are anointed. (laughs) Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. I want... And, and you know, and the thing is, before we leave, I just want to encourage you. This is fruit that none of us are going to see. Right? We're trusting in God that is going to bear fruit, and we'll never see that fruit. And, 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 but, it's, but this is how God works. He doesn't want us to see all the fruit that gets born with our obedience for sowing seeds. So we take credit for it. It's God's work, isn't it? Yes, it is. It's tools of God. Amen.